All right, so we're out here getting the conjunction done. You can actually see it. That's Jupiter on the left, Saturn on the right. And I came out here yesterday because I wasn't sure if the weather was going to be good today, but it looks perfectly fine. So we've got a ton of stacks for Jupiter and Saturn. I'm actually going to get some new Mars stuff too. That's Mars right there. And I hit the ISS again, and you are just going to have to see what I got. <laughs> So the first night, I tried a bunch of different optical trains. Did I want to go with two 2x Barlows, one 2x Barlow with five digital zoom, uh, etc. And I also took some really blown out images just to see how many of the moons I could get in a single picture. So here is Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter on the bottom, Saturn on the top. It's super blown out with the ISO and exposure settings way too high for any detail on the planets. But we did get a bunch of the moons. Uh, funny enough, in this picture, it looks like Jupiter has five, but it's actually just a star uh, happened to be in line with all the moons, which is kind of neat. But we have Europa and Io on the right, Ganymede to the left of Jupiter, and then Callisto over there on the left. On Saturn, four of the moons are actually visible. Two of them are really pronounced, and then two of them are really, really close to Saturn, so they're hard to see. Uh, the one on the right is Titan, the one on the left is Rhea, and then Tethys and Dion are real close to the left and to the right. of. And everything is kind of to scale. You can see the oblong sort of shape of Saturn, but you can really see detail whenever we get into the next images. Okay, so here is a video from the second night. Second night, they were the closest of the two nights, so this was preferable. The conditions were also pretty good. You can see the divisions on Saturn and everything. There's a little bit of detail. Uh, on Jupiter, you can actually see two of the moons alongside it. Ganymede is actually in front of Jupiter right now, and it doesn't really show up in any of the images. But the two moons on the left and right of Jupiter should be Callisto and either Europa or Io. And if we stack this video we end up with a pretty nice image. We don't have the Cassini division on Saturn or anything, but we do have a little bit of banding. Um, we have some banding on Jupiter for sure, and the moons kind of show up in this, but changing the histogram curves a little bit sort of makes them fade out a, little, a bit. But that's how close Jupiter and Saturn were in the sky. This is a pretty rare occurrence. Um, conjunctions between Jupiter and Saturn only occur every, I think it's 20 or so years. But ones this close are on the order of hundreds of years, so this was a pretty unique experience. Alright, so moving on from Jupiter and Saturn, we did make some progress with Mars. So here was our image from last time. It's zoomed in and it gets really, really pixelated because I was only using a 2x magnification Barlow. So we don't have a whole lot of detail here. You can see that there is some coloration on the planet for sure but there's not really much surface detail that we can divine out of that image. So here the next one is, I took this from the city on the first night when I was testing exposures and everything for the optical train for the conjunction. Uh, conditions weren't that great, but we can start to see some detail because I was able to get the two 2x Barlow setup going that I was trying. Uh, that really is pushing the limits of how much useful magnification you can get on our telescope here with the uh, Celestron 130 SLT. But we're waiting for conditions for to get a little bit better. And then they kind of got better on conjunction night. So here's our actual conjunction night image. And we have a good amount of surface detail here. And if we pull up Stellarium, we can rewind back to that night and see exactly what Mars looked like when I took this image. So it can help us recognize a bunch of the surface details here. So you can see right there that dark banding that we have across from the top left matches exactly what we have on Stellarium right there. Uh, interestingly enough, this side of Mars is a pretty prime site for potential Mars landings. And also the Curiosity rover is on this side. So quick little fun fact right there. Alright, so last but certainly not least, the ISS. So we have a 2x Barlow again in the setup, and I actually managed to get things in frame this time. So this actually looks like a pretty blank image, but if you zoom in sort of top and center, you can see this little structure. 
and there's a little bit of detail to it, you can kind of make out some of the structure in the actual image, but that's only if you really know what it looks like. So it kind of came in in a bunch of these little images that we have. These were set at ISO 1600 with 1 over 1600 of a second exposure times because you have to get it because it's flying super, super fast. You need stuff to image without blurring. And we combined all of these into this video right here. So it's flying away from us. It actually started being visible as in started catching the sunlight at approximately 16, uh, 60 degrees above the horizon before it continued descending down. Um, so this was not an optimal transit, but we're going to be looking for an optimal transit in the future because I think I can greatly improve on the results that we have here. But this was really neat that we actually got the ISS flying over in a little video. I, I wasn't necessarily expecting to get enough frames to create a video, but this was really cool. And I am definitely, definitely, definitely going to keep on trying to shoot this as the months roll on. Um, you have a few good opportunities each month. The website that you can use to track the ISS is called Spot the Station. Uh, it's from NASA, and it gives you sort of optimal days and optimal times to try and catch it going over because it has a, a sort of a periodic orbit flies over the earth quite quite quickly quite fast i think it, the sun rises for the iss i believe it was 16 times per day but we're gonna get it one of these days <laughs> so stay tuned guys thanks for watching